Good morning, Kevin here. Good grief. Morning. morning Kevin. Cynthia, Steve, and Martin's with us again. Hey. And Martin has arranged this walk in West Mion. We're in a car park at the moment at the village hall. Martin has said that if we go that way, he's pretty sure we can get to the church. Not 100%. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a funny feeling it's going to be one of those days today. But anyway, it's a little bit overcast at the moment. It's The forecast is to stay dry, and let's hope it is, because I haven't got a waterproof with me. Is that serious? Yeah. I'm very brave. You are brave. Good. Brave or, some people would say, stupid. Foolish. Yes. Foolish. <laughs> Isn't Cynthia kind? Anyway, shall we get cracking? Yeah. yeah. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Right. <coughs> We're heading into the village itself and immediately we've got these thatched cottages right in front of us. Beautiful thatched cottage on a timber frame building. And we get down to this bit here. Beautiful thatched cottage there. As we come down here into the village itself proper and we've got a, a memorial there just here lovely memorial erected to the memory by the last surviving of their six children 1901 in former times, another cross stood on this same spot or near it. The sign of the son of the man. And Cynthia's just noticed on the side here, George Vining Rogers, 1777 to 1846, more than 40 years a medical practitioner in West Mion, and his wife Mary Ann Rogers, his wife 1783 to 1873. A rather lovely memorial to them. Very beautiful. Yeah. So we've got a lovely artist, Anne Butchers, just here. Yeah. Look at that. Can we get a pie? Of course we can carry it. As in, like, we'll see if he's home when we come back. If not, I'll... I think you, I definitely won't be open. I've got two pies at home sitting in the fridge. Sure. So Martin's brought us up this footpath here. Let me just point out where we've come from. We've come from down there. And we're heading up round this way. Through this rather lovely, almost like a tunnel. But Steve and I were just saying that if you're having a, a you know, bad few days um, and you're feeling a little bit down and you want to lift your spirits, you can't do anything better than to come out into an area like this. You're surrounded by wildlife, you're surrounded by trees, and it just lifts your spirits and I just love it it just it really does make you feel better you can probably see the Sun streaming down from my left hand side and uh, yeah it's just lovely look at this sunlight it's, it's dappled sunlight coming through these trees let me just hold the camera up this way and see if I can capture some of that I don't know if I can or not this is just lovely, I love it. But we've got this now, this footpath here. And interestingly, we've got a brick, a brick wall here, and a stone wall here. So I think we're just heading up into the, the Mion Valley Trail. Yeah, so that's, so we could, that's the Mion Valley. So we rejoin. I think we maybe come back. So we've walked up this lane and we've now come to a railway bridge. And let me just show you up this way. 
Martin was saying that earlier on, that when we came along the line up through the woods, that this was the, 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 the where we were, was the railway embankment. And if I go, try and be very clever, hopefully you can see the bridge entrance. Let me try and do it that way. Let me come over here. Do you think, do you think this is possibly where Westmeon Station was? Because it looks like a platform. Oh, yeah, side. definitely. Yeah. So that's the bike. Yeah. It was 53, wasn't it? Yeah. 53. Nearly, not quite. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. This is where the station was. Yeah. <coughs> well, viewer, I've just been told off. We've walked up much, this is a long, long pull up this road here. But I've been having a lot of chitter chatter with Martin and Steve and Cynthia. And I've just been told off by Cynthia because I've not been doing enough filming. So I'm going to make up for that now and show you this view through this valley. But it's beautiful countryside. But I did say just now this woodland down through here is beautiful. Just look at the colours changing. But then you've got this swathe of fir trees along there and going right up through the length of that. And it is such a shame, I hate seeing that. Those are gonna be beech trees and, and oak trees in this woodland, but you've got that swathe of, of fir trees, which is gonna kill the light and stop the stuff growing. But Cynthia was saying something very interesting just now. And let me ask her what she was saying. Cynthia, you were saying about bison in this country. Yeah, they've introduced two bison yeah. into some woodland, I can't remember where. And it turned out <coughs> the female was already pregnant. So right. a bison has been born on English soil for the first time in thousands of years. And the reason is for, and what are they going to do with these bison? Um, they are penned in because yeah. it's considered unsafe to yeah. let them roam. But the intention is to make their pen much, much bigger. Yeah. So they will literally be as if they were free yeah. and they will clear the forest floor yeah. as used to happen. Yeah. Um, rewilding they call it. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah, that's great. And that will allow, allow other plants to come and grow and from grow. the from the from the, the, the from the forest floor. Forest floor, yeah. yeah. That was the same different one, isn't that? Yeah, the one earlier. That looks like an old BSA. <laughs> so we've stopped, we've had a little bit of a snack and something to drink, but as you can see, jacket was on, still on at the moment, because we had a shower come through, which was a shame because they don't forecast any rain, and I hope there's not going to be any more, but we're now on the South Downs Way. South Downs Way comes up through this field here. Down the bottom of the lodge, the bottom of the hill, there is a lodge and cafe somewhere, and also a yurt village. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but the, let's say South Downs Way comes up through this field, where those cyclists are. That's the South Downs Way, and then it comes up through a gate and acutely right angle along here. There we are. South Downs Way and across the road we have got Old Winchester Hill. But I don't know which way we've got to go yet. There is a signpost, mm, 
back down there on the other side of the road for Old Winchester Hill. And it says there, follow the acorn. No cyclists, horses or motorcycles. Bridleway, restricted byway, and byway road. And it's a national trail. Oh yeah. Donkey's years. What is a donkey? I don't know. Is it shorter than a, a dog's year? I don't know. Yeah, we've got the notice board. Welcome to Old Winchester Hill. And that's where we are just there. And if you follow the trail all the way round, which I don't think we are, are we? Not sure. Not sure? <laughs> whatever, whatever this does. Iron Age Fork. And that's a lovely walk actually out to there. So we used to we've come up here on New Year's Day as a family. It's a sort of New Year's Day walk when we were teenagers. Oh fantastic. So. I was just about to say, look, you can see a polar bear. I did say it looked like a polar bear as I came up to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, fantastic. We'll lovely place. We'll keep an eye open for bison. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is big cows though, are they really? We around, around there, didn't we, yeah, we did. Yeah, that's the Iron Age Fort over there. Iron Age Fort. Sorry to bring you up the same place, but it's a wonderful spot. Oh no, we we, we like revisiting yeah, places. Been up here for a few years. No, beautiful. No, we didn't. No, no. This is new. So we've gone. We've had to turn left just as we get to the Iron Age Fort, which is literally just there, the raised area. So I think we're going to circumnavigate the... Um... <laughs> Steve heard me use that, uh, that, that terminology, which was quite a shock to Steve, because he never hears anything like that coming out of my mouth. Um, so we're wandering, wandering around the Iron Age Fort, but if I remember rightly, this actually links up with the footpath that goes straight over the top of the Iron Age Fort. Well, there's only one footpath we've got to go, and that's down here. Um, but we've got to be very careful because we're walking on. Yep. Yeah. I was just about to say, we've got to be careful we don't slip. Which is exactly what I've just done, because we're walking on, on chalk and flint. I've got a pole in my bag, but it's not very good being in the bag. But I'm, I'm going to leave it there for now, because it's not too bad. So, let me just show you. Old Winster Hill is up there, all the sheep, and we've come all the way down this hedgerow and along this track here. And as we came along, we spotted this. Look at all this, these wreaths. That's, that's, that's going to be a, it's going to be a pressure. And interestingly, this is Australian Air Force uh, here. But here is this memorial. And let me try and get this extended out. I don't know if you're going to be able to read that. There's too much for me to try and read it off, off just like that, but crash sites, a sterling crash site. It was 17 miles away in Romsey, that was. And a horser crash site um, at Warnock Park, one mile away. And Warnock Park is diagonally away from where we are. So this is fairly new by the looks of it. But here, let me try and show you this without, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Oop. There, at the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. And it gives all the names of the... 33. 33 of them. 
33? Yeah. Thank you, Cynthia. So that's it, that's all their names on there, look. The first one is, was that thir three PI, what's that? Akoi 7th Airborne. That almost sounds American to me. Something to do with Australia. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Can't know why, but <laughs> no. But there is this Australian wreath here. Yeah. Which is rather well, interesting. Must have been in Australia, I guess. Yeah. And that's that's the one there, the Australian wreath. Australia, Royal Air Force. So yeah, one of them must yeah, be. Yeah. Absolutely. You can probably tell from the letters oh, after their here names. R A A F. So that'd be Royal Australian, Australian Air, Air Force. Force. Yeah, yeah. So Flight Sergeant Kenrick Payne. There yeah, go. there you go. Yeah. And what's this one here? Glider Pilot Regiment there. And what's this one? Oh, another one, Glider Pilot Regiment. That's just a fantastic thing to, to find. And the fact that they've been remembered in this way. And all the Glider Pilot Regiments are depicted by an eagle by the looks of it. We stopped briefly, well, 10 minutes. Martin wants to have a cup of tea. He's got his own little flask in his bag. So we had a snack as well. So we're now, oh, hang on a minute. Ah, look at that. I could have gone up there and got a shot of that railway bridge from underneath. Blast. Can I get down through there, Stephen, without getting stuck? Will I be able to get back up though? Yep, I'm going down under this fence. Well, everybody, um, the last proper video clip you saw um, on our walk where you saw myself and Steve um, walking up the side of a fence, and you may have heard me say, I hope I can get back up. Well, I didn't. Unfortunately, there was, um, I had a nasty fall. Um, the video, I was videoing as I went down under the fence. Um, I didn't switch the video off, um, the, the, my GoPro camera off. It seems to have shut down um, as I've gone under the fence. I was going to film as I go down the bank. Um, I'd got under the fence um, and uh, I fell. I don't know how, I don't know why. Um, whether I slipped on something, a loose branch, a bit of wet ground, I have no idea. Um, from the time I got under the fence, um, I don't remember anything until my head, face, body hit the ground some, I don't know, 15 feet away across the, the other side of a track. Um, the impact was pretty tremendous. Um, this eye... I don't know whether you can see that or not. Probably you can. Um, took, the eyebrow took the, the biggest brunt of the, the fall. Um, my head hit a, um, a, a tree root that was coming down. You'll see in the in the end clip on the far side of the track a branch or a root coming down. And there was a gnarly pit of root coming out about that bit big. And that's what my head hit. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details. Um, there's a there's lots of it I'm still finding out about now. Um, <coughs> but I'm, I, I may have had some sort of concussion. I don't know. Um, it seems that my my mind, my memory, shut down. Um, and I've been talking to Cynthia um, yesterday and on Monday, um, and she's been mentioning things that has brought a memory back to me. Um, because, you know, it, it's just awful. It was just awful. Um, Cynthia and Martin were a little bit behind us on the track. Steve called out something like Kevin's down or Kev's down or Kev's fallen. And they got to me within 15 seconds or so, 10 seconds. And Cynthia said, my, my back was absolutely soaked with sweat from shock, um, adrenaline or whatever. Um, and I remember her saying, Kev, are you okay? Or Kevin, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm not. And with that, they looked at my hands and, and the blood was just tremendous. Uh, head injuries are always like that. Um, 
but uh, it ended up um, I managed to walk after they got me sorted out Cynthia had a a very basic first aid kit and this just while I'm talking about this um, make sure if you're going out on a walk that you have got a even the most basic first aid kit it is so important if Cynthia hadn't had that in her in her rucksack I don't know what we'd have done um, um, because you know my eye was a real mess my eyebrow was a real mess um, but please if you've got a first aid kit check it make sure you've got just the basic stuff in there plasters some some lint um things like that um what do they call these steri strips or something if you've got a gash or a cut you can put these steri strips across that hold the cut together very important um after they got me sorted out i managed to walk about a mile i thought it was just a few hundred yards but evidently it was about a mile um i couldn't go any further um I was really feeling unwell. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Martin and Steve decided to head off and get the car um, in, in West Meon. Um, Cynthia stayed with me. I was sat on the ground on some walking trousers, but I was getting cold. So we had to, we had to get moving because I said I needed to get warm. We eventually got to the main road, which was about another mile, a half a mile away. Um, and about 20 minutes later, Steve and Martin came back and picked us up. We managed to get some, some other dressings at the West Me on football ground where there was a match being played. And then Martin said, you ought to take him to A&E. Um, we ended up at Petersfield um, UTC or ULC or something where Cynthia um, came in with me and we the triage nurse sorted me out. I had a look at me after about an hour um fantastic care <coughs> cannot fault them whatsoever um we had to wait about another hour to be treated by a, um i think it was al or andy um and he was superb he was a paramedic practitioner um and he cleaned the, the wound up he um uh gave me four local anesthetic um injections puts four stitches in my eye and a bit where he could glue it. Um, and I had a tetanus shot. So, and that's where we are now. I will put some photographs up um, of how I've progressed during the last week. It's actually um, a week a week ago today. I'm recording this on, on, on Saturday and it was a week ago. Um, this time, um, seven, eight days ago, I was in A&E. So yes, I will, um, hopefully that explains why I'm like this. Um, this is, say, eight days later. Um, but I've got, I mean, bruising coming out everywhere. My wrists, my fingers, my thumbs, my my forearm has got a huge bruise here. I've got bruising up here, my knees, my thighs. Um, it's just, yeah. And, uh, and I've not been feeling great, obviously. So anyway... Um, I hope you enjoyed uh, the video that has been on, but this this is just the ending bit from me um, and the usual stuff. Please follow, like and subscribe. Um, it was me trying to get a little bit extra for the video um, because I saw a tunnel to an old railway line um, or a, a tunnel under a bridge, not very wide. But I just wanted to get this extra shot to make it more interesting for the viewers. Um, and unfortunately, this is what happened. Um, if you hear the, if you can hear the commentary um, or the audio from Steve and I, Steve, I think, says, Kev, be careful or something like that, or walk round, um, which I could have done. I could have walked round and it would have saved all this. But, <coughs> oh, oh, sorry, my ribs are hurting everything as I cough. Um, but what I would like to say is a huge, <clears throat> a huge thank you to um, Cynthia, Steve and Martin for taking care of me. Because if I'd have been on my own, I'd have been in big trouble. Um, 
I just wouldn't have known what to have done. Um, but a massive um, thank you to those three. They were brilliant, really were. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. And uh, please take care out there, everybody, because you just don't know what's going to happen next. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <clears throat>this is kevin thanks very much for watching the video if you've enjoyed what you've seen follow like and subscribe to my youtube channel and that would be great thanks very much bye bye bye